investment analysis or statement analysis is a bottom-up view of investing. A top-down view is that of a general macroeconomic analysis, and frankly, that's another course entirely. But if we were to look at a company individually, perhaps from their statements, and of course that begs the question, uh, which statements and what do we look for once we get them? No longer in the Wall Street Journal and now available on the web anywhere. You can get the uh, information like reading it you would out of a newspaper about a particular company. And uh, what we're going to look for is the payout ratio. And as such, it's not listed, so let's go figure it. Well, it's the dividends divided by the earnings, and uh, you subtract that number from uh, one, and you'll get the, the company's retention rate, the amount they plow back in. And what I want to do here is show what I believe to be a relatively original trick, and that is to compute the payout ratio by simply taking the dividend yield and multiplying it times the P.E. And uh, not only is that a shortcut, but uh, if it's high, it often is associated with safer firms. And if it's low, it's associated with riskier firms of both varieties, those that are lying and dying and crying, and uh, those that are on the uptake, ready to grow, and are the next generation. But if it's high, it's probably safer because they're giving you most of the funds. How do we compute it? Well, uh, dividends over earnings is uh, dividends over price times price over earnings and well the first two are dividend yield and the second is the PE ratio and the prices cancel out. Here's an example from a made-up security and we see it's made-up symbol pays uh, two dollars a year in dividends which in actuality would be four payments of 50 cents each quarterly. Uh, the PE ratio is the uh, earnings divided into the price, and they've done it for us here, uh, showing it as 10. We don't see the earnings. We have a yield of 4%. We can confirm that because that $2 over the closing price of 50 is indeed 4%. Uh, the volume will skip, and uh, yes, the change was up two points from yesterday's close of 48 if we wanted to compute the earnings, we would uh, take the uh, price of 50 and divide it by the P.E. ratio of 10, giving the 5, and reminded that that's how it was created because the earnings of 5 into the price of 50 gives us the reported 10 P.E. ratio. And then we could divide that into the dividends from the table of $2, and we get 0.440%. Or we could directly just read off the table the yield, 4%, P.E. ratio, 10 times, the product of which gives us 40%. If we wanted to go further, we could get an annual report from a company. You get those if you own the shares, but in many cases, you can get them for free even if you're not an owner. You could go to the Wall Street Journal site. They have a little box inside the Wall Street Journal as well for those that have a club symbol. And uh, you can contact them and get an annual report. And let's look at some numbers. Uh, here's an income statement. And uh, by the way, these uh, ledger names are not in concrete. One person's revenue is another person's earned income is another person's sales. Uh, gross income can be called operating income and uh, so on. And uh, we see this company, uh, I guess, made um, 20, 20,000, 20 million. We'll have to look at the units. But <laughs> we in finance and investing know better. Uh, if we were to detail these numbers, we could have just done them piece by piece. And uh, I guess I'm going to keep the depreciation out of there because that's just a... Uh, entry for the purposes of commuting taxes and there's no cash activity and uh, the um, shortcut here is we take the net income after tax the uh, profit and loss the accounting figure and the rule is you add back the depreciation and here we would have gotten 40 and uh, we have a proof on the right there for those of you who are algebraically inclined adding back the depreciation uh, gives us all those cash items after tax plus the savings on the tax from being able to deduct the depreciation. Well, okay, there's the accounting world, and then there's the real world of cash. But 
Let's take an example of where the depreciation is increased, perhaps a rapid write-off. Uh, United Airlines comes to mind back during uh, the original oil crisis where they decided to write off the airplanes more rapidly, lost more money in the accounting statements, but the stock price went up. Why? Because they had more cash flow. Here, same figures we had before. Add 30 more to depreciation. Well, sure enough, zero income, but now the cash flow is 50 instead of 40. And that makes sense. If the tax bracket's one-third and we write off 30 more, we would gain a cash flow of an additional 10, which we did going from 40 to 50, but while the company lost 10 more. So we know that cash flow is our criterion for an investor and uh, the accounting statements need to be adjusted you know, or to put it another way we know they go crying all the way to the bank uh, let's look at some other figures uh, the accountants like to look at a current ratio among so many others and we're gonna find later we're gonna look at a ratio that they don't even use uh, the current ratio is current assets over current liabilities and here we have a firm and we'd like to make the current ratio larger uh, first let's compute it I've now asked to rest the uh, current assets and current liabilities and we go to compute it and we add the 800 100 and 100 of the cash accounts receivables inventory over the accounts payables and wages payable and we get 1.25 well that one and a quarter may not be high enough so we want to window dress make the numbers look nicer so let's see what could we do oh well we could sell the truck where's that truck uh, we could uh, borrow some money no we're not don't want to borrow money we could sell some stock whoa this is an easier way to do this uh, let's just pay bills so let's pay the accounts payable it was 600 now zero uh, the cash is decreased by 600 uh, we're in balance uh, something you can do quick and easy and uh, let's see our new current ratio is two to one well that's great oh but wait a minute the current ratio is purportedly a measure of your ability to pay bills your liquidity your solvency and yet now we have less cash and in fact notice if we were to pay the wages too, making the employees happy for a year-end bonus uh, our current ratio would be infinity and we'd have no cash at all and there are many other ratios that are subject to window dressing especially if they have a balance sheet component probably one of the most important is uh, return on assets uh, here's a company let's say it has five products or divisions and makes uh, respectively 13 through 5 percent each one of them in the same size uh, adds to 45 and we get an average ROA of 9 percent uh, what if we needed to increase that uh, how could I increase it what if I sell two divisions I now only have divisions or products a B and C I have an average return in terms of each of them being equally weighted of a return on assets of now 11 percent but we now have less profit well regardless uh, the return on assets is a useful measure and it's the profit margin times the turnover which as you'll see is algebraically correct because profit over sales times sales over assets sales cancel and we get profit over assets and uh, we'd be interested to an investor in making that a return on equity well algebraically that's profit over assets times assets over equity and that's the ratio the accountants almost never report so let's go and figure it below you'll find a table of debt asset debt equity and then the uh, asset equity multiplier if we have a debt asset ratio and the little box beside it we make a mini balance sheet and we can then figure the components if it's a debt equity ratio a little trick is just add the number one to it so what do we make of all this well figures don't lie but liars sure do figure <laughs>